I love light. I love how it works. It can tell us so much about gemstones. Mm -hmm. Experiments are fun. I don't know what we're doing. Oh, uh, so the thing this time is I actually do. Um, <laughs> um, the Deathly Hallows, number three, and the best was the, I love Harry Potter. I maybe don't love it that much <laughs> to be able to answer that. The three objects were. The uh, wand. The wand. The yes. wand, the stone. And? And the best was the cloak of invisibility. Oh, okay. Are we gonna turn invisible today? Well, we're gonna try to turn some things invisible today. Okay, I like uh, that. And that's what's in the box. Okay. <gasps> I think we're gonna get science-y today. Oh yes, we're definitely gonna get science -y. We have, mm, I smell it. Cinnamon oil, mm -hmm. it smells like Christmas. <laughs> So what we're gonna talk about today is refraction. As you know, when light goes through a substance, the light slows down and it bends. As gemologists, you do a refractive index test where you take a gemstone, use a high refractive index liquid, and then you bounce light through the liquid and the stone and back out, and you can tell how much that light bends. That's the refractive index, and that gives us a big clue as to what the stone is. But an interesting thing that we also use the refractive index for is when you put a stone with a lower refractive index and completely immerse it in a liquid with a higher refractive index, you get an effect somewhat like the cloak of invisibility and the light is refracting around it. So are you saying that the cloak of invisibility could be real? It's possible. The difficult thing would be to do it in air. <laughs> The refractive index of air is what we're seeing right now. So that's why you have to immerse it in the liquid is to get the light to bend differently as it's going through a denser medium. Let's get to it. Right. I want to see this. I'll let you do the honors if you like. Okay, so we are pouring in mm -hmm. The cinnamon oil, the cinnamon how much? Oil. Just to cover uh, it? Just enough to, to cover it there. And so the refractive index of quartz is right around 1544, 155. The cinnamon oil is right around that range right there. So immersing this, what we're hoping is going to happen is the sharp edges of the uh, gemstone should disappear. Okay. I'm actually kind of nervous. It's kind of cool. <laughs> There's a secret message under there. I see little blobs of color, but I don't that see any wild. edges really at all. And you can see all of the color zoning. One of the identifying features of quartz is, is color banding, mm -hmm. and you can see that. I can also read this message. Yes. <laughs> and safety note for those of you at home, do not immerse yourself in cinnamon oil and try to sneak up on <laughs> yeah. your friends. That's gonna end badly, don't do it. I can't get over that. I think that it's is really so neat. cool. So let's try a few other stones and maybe some other liquids and see what oh, else we can see. We have more. To send this home a little bit more, we're gonna do colorless quartz and you'll really see how much they vanish. So this has the same RI as amethyst. Mm -hmm. And we're using benzyl benzyl weight, which also has a similar RI. It's used for aromatherapy as well. Again, still wearing the gloves just to be safe. I'll let you do the honor oh, Thank there. you. It's warmer. <laughs> yeah, that's gone. Okay, I, I do see a little bit of iridescence at the bottom. Is that just... Well, what you're seeing there, honestly, so one of the things that happens, like I said, when light goes into this liquid and into the gemstone, the light slows down and bends. However, white light is made up of multiple colors, and as those colors bend, they all bend at different speeds. And because of that, the longer they're bouncing around, the more they start to separate from each other because they're traveling at different speeds. And that causes them to disperse and separate out into those rainbow colors. You might also hear dispersion be termed as fire with, with the display of spectral colors, but that, that's really cool. Presto. <laughs> If I were in a lab, why would I do this? So if you did not have access to a refractometer and you were looking at these clear stones and you're like, wow, I have no idea 
whether or not those are diamonds or quartz, and that's a really, really big question I want to answer. Well, if this was a pile of diamonds, you would still be able to see the diamonds quite clearly. But knowing the refractive index of my liquid, putting it in there and having the manish, I know that can't be diamond because it's much lower. So that's where this test would be very practical for you there. This is a one carat diamond. Diamond has a high RI. Yeah. It's above two. It, it's significantly above two. And... Oh, you can see it clear so, as day. Now we've got quartz and we've got a diamond in there and the diamond is absolutely there, but the quartz is still are just ghosts. I love that. Science is so cool. Experiments are fun. If you want to make diamond disappear, you actually would have to use a heavy liquid. As the density and the refractive index climb, the liquids tend to become increasingly more toxic. You want to make sure that the area you're using them in is very well ventilated. Later on, we're going to use those heavy liquids that are going to let us see inside higher refractive index stones like andalusite and sapphire and kyanite. They will allow you to see into the stones to see color zoning and inclusions. I love it. But first, I want to show a little experiment with double refraction to uh, show you what that looks like. Cool. I spy with my little eye calcite. Yes, yes you do. This is a cleaved rhombohedron of calcite and in one direction, light just goes through it, straight through, but in all other directions, light doubles and splits. And so I've drawn a little circle here and we'll move that over and you can see it. And you'll see as we rotate it around, the light is going through, splitting into two rays each of those rays are bouncing off of the image of the circle on the paper, and then they're bouncing back out. So that's why we're seeing it doubled. In gemology, you learn about double refraction pretty early and with calcite, mm -hmm. it never gets old. It okay. literally never gets old. I love looking at that. So we're gonna try another little experiment. So now I've drawn just a dot and we're gonna see what happens here. So when I do it around, you'll see that one of them stays completely still and the other just orbits around it. It's like finding your dominant eye. Exactly. So that was fun. Next, let's actually take a deep breath and break out the really heavy liquids. Okay, so we've got heavy liquids here in yes. succession, two, six, seven, three, zero, five, and three, three, one. As the density goes up, the refractive index goes up as well, which is why we're using these. So I've got a variety of gemstones here. We're gonna need to bring this up to eye level a little bit here because you're gonna need to get really kind of close to see it. Okay, we've got an elevated platform. Mm -hmm. We've got a flat light, and then we've got our heavy liquid. So we've got a sapphire. You wanna do it straight down and tell me what you see. I see growth zoning. <laughs> I see angular growth zoning. So you can really see the hexagonal structure mm -hmm. there. It comes to a point where you have zones this way and zones this way. Yep. Very cool thing to see. Let's do the kyanites next. So we're gonna use this liquid. So this is just a slightly lower RI, but we're gonna use a slightly lower RI gemstone for this one. Kyanite has a lot of striation, so mm -hmm. I'm expecting to see a lot of banding, a lot of different zoning. Yeah, this is gonna be cool because there's all sorts of neat stuff in here. Oh, wow. All yeah. those fractures. Mm -hmm. The edges really disappear mm -hmm. there, and you can see the color concentration mm -hmm. more in the middle of the stone. One of the interesting things about kyanite, another name for it is disthene, because it has different hardnesses in different directions, and the way that it grows is one of the things that causes those different striations to a form. It's, it's a very interesting gem. All right, so let's go with andalusite in the lighter liquid here. I love andalusite. andalusite it's such an interesting stone, just like visually from mm -hmm. a testing perspective, it's really fun to test. And kyanite, andalusite are polymorphs. Yeah. So the cool thing about andalusite and kyanite is they're chemically identical. They've just formed in different crystal structures, have uh, different properties and things like that. Andalusite is very cool because it has eye visible trichroism. Mm -hmm. So it has this greenish, yellowish, brownish, red hue to it. Very cool. So here we go. Put that down oh. in there. It has very characteristic dark needle-like inclusions, mm -hmm. which are very visible under this. It's actually pretty cool because on the edges, you can see the mm -hmm. yellow color, and in the middle of the stone, you can see this greenish color. Nice. And it's really concentrated with yeah. dark, uh, some look a little bit flake-like, but mm -hmm. most are needle-like. All right, and last one. 
Oh, you can see right through the middle mm -hmm. that mineral inclusion. Very useful tool. Love that. So I fun. I thought you'd get a kick out of that. So. <laughs> I do. I love light. I love how it works. It can tell us so much about gemstones. Mm -hmm. Now, if they can figure out how to bend the light around us in air, like the liquid does around the gemstone that's immersed, then we'd be able to sneak up on our friends. Although, if it's got that, that heavy liquid smell, then they're going to know There's no surprise yeah, there. There's no surprise at all there. It's so fun to be able to show you guys these experiments. There's always something to learn and we love learning along with you. So let us know in the comments if there are any other experiments that you'd like to see from our end. I'm sure you have some up your sleeve. Oh yeah, there's all sorts of things we can do. Well, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss out on any of our future videos or experiments. Thanks for watching.